What is a conscience clause? It refers to federal and state rules that allow health care providers and institutions to refuse to provide certain medical treatments on the basis of religious or moral grounds. That's why it's also called a refusal clause. We think that the term conscience clause is a little bit problematic because it's limited. It refers only to the conscience of health care providers and institutions who refuse to provide services, and not, for instance, to, the, to, to pr institutions and providers who do provide provide services to patients on the basis of conscience, nor does it apply to the consciences of patients whose belief systems might be very different from that of their providers. Let's just say, for instance, there's a woman who uh, needs contraception because she already is a mother of two, and that's her ethical and spiritual responsibility and limits. But her pharmacist says, I'm not going to give you this contra contraception because it goes against my conscience. Well, what about the conscience of that mother? or the conscience of her doctor, who as a medical provider, gave her that prescription. And for reasons like that, we think it's important to include and to really consider more than one conscience, but the consciences of all the folks who are involved in these dilemmas. Why is the Obama administration rescinding the Bush administration's Midnight Conscience Clause rule? Well, for one thing, the Bush rule was adopted on his last day in office. It was a pretty political rule, and it goes way too far. It goes beyond just abortion and sterilization to allow people to refuse contraception, fertility treatments, even end-of-life care. And it goes beyond direct services, so you don't have to provide information to patients, referrals, counseling, treatment, or anything. In addition to that, the extensions are way too broad. It ref it refers not only to health care providers, but to just about anybody in health care. That could be volunteers, candy stripers, ambulance drivers. It's way too vague, and the rule is unnecessary. Before the Bush rule, there was a compromise in place that worked. It balanced consciences, and it was clear and not vague. One more thing is the Bush rule implies unnecessary restrictions on health care institutions. They're already economically strapped. And for low-income patients who have very few options, when they're refused treatment, it's very, very hard for them to get health care. How should the government address questions on conflicting conscience in the future? These are not easy questions, but it's very important to get them right. Of course, we should always respect matters of conscience, but we're also talking about the health of patients, their well-being, and even their lives. What that means is that the health of patients and their needs must always be paramount. There are a couple principles we can refer to that help guide us through these very difficult situations. So for one, in an emergency situation, even if someone objects to, to providing health care, if no one else is immediately available, the health care provider does have to step in and uh, serve the patient. Um, another principle is that objections need to be known in advance, and that means health care providers should inform their employers, their institutions, and their patients about what services they refuse to provide so that if a patient wants to go elsewhere, he or she can. And institutions like hospitals should tell patients this information as well so that they'll know it in advance. Um, a third principle is that systems should be in place so that the patient gets seamless and qualified care. So if, for instance, an objector says, I can't provide this service, there's a system in place for someone else to step in so that the patient's needs will be served. And one other thing, it's one thing to not provide services to a patient, but you should never obstruct that patient from finding treatment somewhere else. And that means you might provide information or treatment in a very timely and an unbiased way, again, because the patient's conscience and belief might be very different from your own. We live in a diverse democracy, and worldviews and belief systems are very different from each other. So the important thing is, is not to have one conscience trump all others, but to negotiate them in a way that respects the conscience of everyone who's involved.